Here are the best growth ETFs you can buy right now in 2022. We'll go over each one to determine which fund may be a valuable addition to your portfolio. Welcome back to the channel, folks. It's Liquid here. You may already have a balanced and diversified portfolio through other index funds. The VTI and XUU ETFs give you exposure to the entire stock market in the US, and you can buy all-in-one globally diversified ETFs, which hold companies both in developed and developing markets. So why should you consider investing in additional growth companies? Well, it's because growth stocks tend to generate growing profits significantly faster than the overall economy and other stocks. Because of this higher growth rate, these companies are expected to outperform the broader market over time. Here's a 20-year chart comparing the vanilla S&P 500 index with an S&P 500 growth index fund. The growth ETF in this case only contains stocks in the S&P 500 that exhibits growth characteristics. A stock's price is determined by future expected profitability, and when you only have companies whose earnings are expected to grow at an above average rate relative to the market, then it makes sense that over the long run, your investment returns are also likely to be above average. Something to be aware of with growth stocks is they usually don't pay dividends, and even when they do, it's usually a small amount. That's because they tend to reinvest their retained earnings into highly profitable opportunities. And this makes sense if you think about it. Let's say your hot air balloon business is really taking off. You can either distribute the profit from this year to your shareholders or reinvest it back into your company. Your decision will likely be based on how effective you can use that extra capital. For example, if you believe buying more balloons will triple your sales next year, then of course you would do that. In fact, if you pay out your retained earnings and dividends when the money clearly could have been better used to expand your business, then your shareholders may not be very happy with you even though you gave them money. Like yeah, dividend payments are great and all, but not when they come at the expense of foregoing significantly higher future returns. That's why investors in growth companies are not focused on dividend income, but rather on the appreciation of the company's share price and future profits. Compared to more mature companies, growth stocks tend to have relatively high valuations as measured by price-to-earnings ratio. However, they also see faster growth in revenue and income than their peers. So with that said, let's talk about how you can isolate and capture some of this growth in your own portfolio. A lot of growth-oriented stocks are in the technology sector, and the NASDAQ 100 is an index that consists of large companies on the NASDAQ stock exchange. And one passive ETF that tracks the performance of this index is the Invesco NASDAQ 100 ETF. The ticker is QQQM. Basically, instead of taking the risk to invest only in Apple or Microsoft, the QQQM ETF gives you exposure to all the best tech stocks from a single investment. Right now, it holds 102 securities, and these holdings are rebalanced quarterly. Since it's based on the NASDAQ 100 index, only stocks that pass certain requirements can go into this ETF. And if a company doesn't meet the minimum requirements in one criteria, such as cash flow, then it has to make it up with larger minimum amounts in another area, like revenue. Then, after a company gets listed on the market, it must maintain certain standards to continue trading. And failure to meet these specifications will result in delisting from the NASDAQ. So this helps to improve the quality of companies listed on this exchange. Now, QQQM has a popular sibling that seems to get all the attention, and that's the Invesco QQQ Trust, which just has the simple QQQ. This is one of the most traded ETFs in the US based on volume. So what is the difference between these two ETFs? Well, there practically isn't one. They both hold the same underlying stocks with the same weighting, and their returns are basically identical. Then why have two of them, right? ETF providers like Invesco make money based on management fees. QQQ originated in 1999, and for a while it was the only ETF of its kind. But over time, other companies started to offer similar ETFs with lower fees, in order to stay competitive, Invesco introduced a new ETF in 2020, which tracks the same index as QQQ, but with a lower expense ratio. And by doing it this way, instead of just dropping their fees on the original ETF, Invesco can continue to earn the high fees from those existing investors who may not be aware of the newer lower fee QQQM. QQQ has an expense ratio of 0.2%, while its less popular counterpart is slightly lower at 0.15%. So which one of these should you consider buying? Well, if you plan to do swing trading or dabble with options, QQQ may give you an advantage with its better liquidity and narrower bid-ask spread. And if you're a long-term buy-and-hold investor, then QQQM can provide you with better value because you pay lower fees and keep more of the returns for yourself over a long period of time. 
In either case, you're looking at one, three, and five-year returns that will make pretty much any investor happy. Now, there are some leveraged versions of QQQ from ProShares, but they're not really good choices for long-term investing, so I'm not going to talk about them in this video. Instead, let's look at what Vanguard and BlackRock, two of the largest fund managers in the world, have to offer in terms of growth stock ETFs. The Vanguard Growth ETF VUG is linked to the CRSP US Large Cap Growth Index, which offers exposure to large cap companies within the growth sector of the US stock market. The index contains hundreds of holdings and exposure is tilted most heavily towards technology, while industrial, healthcare, and consumer goods receive equal weightings and it has an expense ratio of just 0.04%. Not to be outdone, iShares has its own growth stock ETF, which also offers exposure to large cap companies. It's called the iShares S&P 500 Growth ETF, ticker IVW. This fund gives you exposure to the S&P 500 stocks that have growth characteristics. It has a higher annual fee of 0.18% compared to Vanguard's offer. And if you want diversification with your growth stocks, it's worth pointing out that both Vanguard and BlackRock offer a Russell 1000 growth ETF. And these funds track the highest ranking stocks in the Russell 3000, which represents about 93% of the total market cap of that index. Both these ETFs hold practically the same stocks, about 500 each, and have the same percentage composition. So because Vanguard's version has a much lower expense ratio relative to iShares, that's the clear winner here. How does iShares get away with charging a higher fee for essentially the same index fund? It's probably the first mover's advantage. There are already a lot of investors who own IWF, and for whatever reason, will not be switching to the Vanguard's cheaper version. The difference between the management fees is only 0.11%, which may not sound like a lot, but the longer time goes on, the more obvious the difference in returns will be. And speaking of returns, let's see the relative performance of these different growth-oriented ETFs. This is a two-year chart of QQQ right now for the blue line. The gray line down here is the S&P 500, so I'm just using this as a reference point. Let's add in VUG which is the Vanguard Growth Index Fund. And you can see it's above the S&P 500, but it's underperforming QQQ just a little bit. Let's add in the iShares S&P 500 Growth ETF. And that's this pink line over here. And finally, the Vanguard Russell uh, 1000 Growth ETF. So all kind of together, but uh, the QQQ does uh, stand out from the rest. If we zoom out to a five-year chart, and it looks like VONG, the Russell 1000 growth ETF, seems to be performing a little bit better uh, over the last five years, but still QQQ is all the way up here. And of course, you can just replace QQQ with QQQM uh, because QQQM doesn't have a long enough history to look at a five-year chart, so we're looking at it this way. And if I zoom out even further, let's say this is about 10 years, you can see the gap is even greater between Triple Q, the rest of the ETFs, and the S&P 500. And finally, we can analyze these four ETFs by breaking down and comparing their properties to each other. In terms of annual fees, VUG has the lowest expense ratio. It also has the most assets under management, and there's a good amount of liquidity there. The smallest fund right now is QQQM, but keep in mind its variation QQQ has $215 billion AUM, which would make it the biggest out of these funds here. Because some growth stocks do pay dividends, you see a little bit of a yield from these ETFs. It's not much, but it's good to know for tax treatment purposes. The price to earnings ratio is a number to determine the valuation of a stock. And the lower this number is, the cheaper the security. So the companies in QQQM tend to make up the lowest PE ratio, which is a good thing for long-term investors. But this ETF also has the most concentrated portfolio. If you want more diversification, it's better to go with one of the other three. Fund flows gives us an idea of how popular an ETF is. QQQM doesn't have much of a history, but when we look at VUG, there's a lot of green here in this graph over a five-year period. You can see over January and February of this year, when the market went into correction territory, investors were adding more money into this fund than they took out. 
All the fund float charts look pretty good on these ETFs, except for the iShares IVW. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just not a very popular fund. Maybe I don't know something about this ETF that other investors have discovered that they don't like, so they're taking money out of the fund. It could be no big deal, but it's something to keep an eye on. What IVW did do well on is the ESG score, which looks at the environmental, social, and governance factors for the companies in these ETFs. And finally, for performance, as we saw earlier, Triple QM has the highest historical returns. So overall, here are my final thoughts on these ETFs. QQQM, probably the best overall equity growth ETF on the market right now. You get a nice concentration of high growth companies, which can be held in conjunction with other index ETFs to create a well-diversified portfolio for the long run. I personally trade options using the more popular variation, Triple Q. Uh, VUG has a lower expense ratio, so it's worth considering if you want to pay the lowest fees. If you feel strongly about ESG and other non-financial factors, then you can take a closer look at IVW. And finally, VONG has a nice balance between low fees, a nice ESG score, decent valuations, and if you're looking for the most diversification, then you can't go wrong with this ETF. Now, if you're still watching, I want to give you a bonus fund to consider. This is the Vanguard Information Technology ETF, ticker VGT. Its long-term performance is pretty much neck and neck with Triple Q. In fact, over the last five years, it has even noticeably outperformed Triple Q, and it has a lower expense ratio of just 0.1%. VGT appears to be better than QQQ or QQQM in a lot of ways. The only thing to be aware of is that VGT only holds stocks in the information technology sector, so you're not going to capture any upside from companies like Costco, Starbucks, Dollar Tree, or other high-growth stocks in sectors sectors outside of technology. But other than that, I do think VGT is a strong contender and is probably a better choice than QQQ for a lot of investors. As you can see, growth stocks can produce above market returns and give diversification benefits to any well-balanced portfolio. But that being said, these stocks aren't for everyone. The price tends to be extremely sensitive to changes in future business prospects, the economy, and even interest rates. When things go better than expected, growth stocks can soar in price, but when they disappoint, higher price growth stocks can also quickly crash back down. So please understand what you're buying before making any investment decisions with these ETFs. Growth stocks require time to grow and can take a long time to realize their full potential. Plus, they can often suffer painful setbacks along the way. So make sure you don't need your money for a long time before putting it into these types of assets. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you got some value out of this video. Happy investing and until next time.